Coming up in this week's action-packed episode of Theme Park Worldwide Weekly, I'll be talking all about Yukon Striker, a brand new dive coaster coming to Canada's Wonderland in 2019. Along with that, a new ride has also been announced for Hansa Park in Germany. I'll be talking all about that and sharing the details. A Six Flags Park over in the USA has announced the closure of one of its rides. I'll be sharing all the details on that one and talking about what I think is going to replace it. And of course, a new dark ride has opened this week at Europa Park in Germany. We'll be taking a look at some images from inside this ride and I'll be talking all about it. I'm Sean Sandbrook, this is Theme Park Worldwide Weekly and that means it's time to cue those titles. It's Wednesday the 22nd of August 2018 and welcome to this week's episode. As you saw there from the intro, lots of theme park news to talk about this week. Obviously when you're doing a weekly show like this, sometimes you'll have minimal stuff go on throughout the week, other times loads of stuff will get announced. And obviously last week was Roller Coaster Day 2018, meaning that quite a few parks like to make announcements on this date. But uh, more about that in a moment when we move into the news segment. But uh, yes, just going a little bit back to what I said just about Roller Coaster Day, we did do a challenge last week and uh, we did all four Merlin theme parks in one day. We started off at Alton Towers, then we drove down to Chessington World of Adventures, then on to Legoland and then ending the day at Thorpe Park. We started at half past nine in the morning, we ended at 25 to six at Thorpe Park. And we had to go into the park by the normal entrance, park on the normal car parks and all that, but also ride one roller coaster in each park. And uh, yeah, I think we did really well. Me and Alex did this challenge. And if you've not yet seen the video, a link is down below in the description. So make sure you check that one out. Uh, along with other new videos, there's a brand new vlog from Legoland Windsor. That went online yesterday as well. That was filmed a couple of weeks back. Obviously, there's been so much content uh, filmed on the channel. It's just been catching up on all them vlogs and getting them online for you guys. Along with that, a couple of brand new videos from Dreamland Margate, uh, a behind the scenes tour of the classic scenic railway. Uh, that went online last week, that's gone down really well. And also the full vlog from Dreamland as well, where we have on ride footage from the new rides there. There's eight new rides at Dreamland. We go on all the bigger ones, show you some footage of some of the new kids' rides, what they've got. And uh, yeah, we had a really good day at Dreamland. Thanks to the park for uh, allowing us to go down and see it all and also film them exclusive on ride POVs. Uh, the POVs are going to be going on separately on the channel channel over the next few weeks as well. Uh, so stay tuned for those. So much going on, it's crazy isn't it? And new videos to come this week will include Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Uh, me, Lee and Alex went there to Pleasure Beach. Yes, Mr Lee Wood! Uh, we went there for a day out. Obviously Lee's been so busy working on Wicker Man at Alton Towers this year. Uh, but we managed to arrange it at Blackpool. We had a fantastic day. That vlog's coming on in the next couple of days. Uh, the wet day that me and Charlotte had at Oakwood will be online. Bit of a shorter vlog that one. Uh, and then Folly Farm as well. And then following that, next week I'm off to Poland to go and ride Hyperion at Energy Landia for the first time and see all that park for my first ever visit. So it really is a busy time of year now on Theme Park Worldwide. We've had summer, it's coming to an end now, uh, but September and October are going to be huge. So much to look forward to and I hope you uh, decide to join us for lots of new videos here on the channel. Anyway, guys, it's a big episode this one. Lots to talk about with the channel and of course news. Uh, but let's move in then to our weekly news roundup. Let's start off then by talking about the large new investment coming to Canada's Wonderland for 2019. It's set to be called Yukon Striker and it's actually going to be a BNN dive machine with a 245 foot drop, making it the tallest, fastest and longest dive coaster in the world. Uh, they're actually taking the record from Val Raven at Cedar Point. Now obviously you've got to bear in mind that both Cedar Point and Canada's Wonderland are owned by Cedar Fair. Uh, so this park just a few years on is taking the record of Val Raven which is quite funny but uh, yeah I mean Val Raven's one of them dive coasters. I really enjoyed it but I feel like the, the vest harnesses kind of take away from the experience a little bit. It stops you getting the, the pushed out of your seat feeling, the airtime uh, as such but more about that a little later on but uh, uh, yeah, a 245 foot drop 
straight into a tunnel which is actually being built underwater. So you've got another coaster at the park that does like a helix uh, and it's actually going to go down through the middle of that as you can see here from the footage uh, which would be great. So they've actually been building that tunnel throughout the past year uh, building up to this announcement a few days ago with Yukon Striker. Uh, but yeah it's going to feature four inversions. One of these in particular is quite interesting and that is a vertical loop. Bear in mind this will be the first BNM dive coaster to actually feature uh, a vertical loop. So that'll be interesting to see how that feels. Much like a lot of these BNM dive coasters, the, the ride comes in two halves. However, the first half of this ride has certainly got a lot more going on than the second half. Uh, the second half there, not much going on at all really, other than the drop and then of course uh, back round towards the brake run. It looks a bit of an interesting second half. I kind of wish that they'd saved a couple of the elements for that second half. It feels like everything goes on in the first bit. You go through the mid-course brake run, as they call it, and then th there's not a lot going on there. So that's a bit of an interesting one. At least Val Raven's got a bit more going on after that mid course, but it has got a total length of 3,625 feet. Uh, it's going to run three trains with 24 riders a train, and uh, like I say, it beats all them records for the tallest, fastest, and longest dive coaster in the world. Uh, it's not just the ride though, of course, this is forming part of a brand new themed area at the park um, called Frontier Canada. Now, this was originally actually planned for the park. Uh, back when it opened in 1981, but it never came to fruition. So I look forward to seeing this one. It's good to see Cedar Fair going more down that themed route. I noticed that at Cedar Point. Uh, stuff like Val Raven, you know, it's got some really nice bits of theming around the ride, like in terms of how it's landscaped. There's not massive themed structures or anything, but it's how it's landscaped, the branding, the logos. I really like it. And I know compared to a lot of the rides in Europe and even here in the UK, it's not particularly heavily themed, but for, for the American parks, what well, aren't particularly well known for doing heavy theming, I suppose Mystic Timbers is a big step up for, for them as well. That's one I look forward to getting on hopefully next year. But it's good to see theming is becoming more of a thing over there. Instead of just announcing a big coaster and not really thinking about the area it's in or the theme, this is what the Cedar Fair are particularly doing. I'd say better than Six Flags at the moment uh, with this one. But uh, yeah, in terms of the area itself, uh, Frontier Canada, other attractions to be featured in that area, uh, a selection of rides, the Mighty Canadian Mine Buster, uh, Lumberjack Soaring Timbers, uh, Flying Canoes, uh, Vortex, Timberwolf Falls and Whitewater Canyon. That'll all form part of this area. Um, so yeah, I look forward to following this one. And uh, yeah, let's have a little look at an on-ride POV. I'll start it from the top of the left hill, this one. Uh, thanks to the park for providing this footage uh, of their brand new ride, Yukon Striker. Here it is from a little front row POV. POV there for Yukon Striker, and that first section looks fantastic, doesn't it? Going down the drop, hopefully some good interaction there, where the coaster will go around the helix as you're going through that drop into the tunnel. Uh, yeah, I love all that. It's just that second section, what I'm just a bit concerned about. The vertical loop looks great, what's in that first half, uh, the other elements, just after that, there's not a lot in that second section. So that and the, the vest harnesses are what concern me. Please b &M, go back to the other restraints. There was so much better on the dive coasters. You really felt the elements more. But uh, yeah, we'll see what happens with this one. I look forward to it. Is it gonna ride as nice 
versus Val Raven, I'm not too sure. But uh, yeah, I still think Sheikra at Bush Gardens still packs a punch. And uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing Griffin at some point as well at the other Bush Gardens in Williamsburg because that looks fantastic. And of course, it doesn't have them vest restraints. But uh, there we go. I'll keep you up to date with all the construction from Kinders Wonderland and that new themed area here on the channel as it happens. Another brand new ride has been announced then this week. This one a little bit closer to home in Europe. And this is actually in Germany at Hansa Park. And they're opening Highlander, which is gonna be the world's tallest and fastest gyro drop tower. I love drop towers, especially a good gyro drop tower. And uh, yeah, this looks like it's gonna be fantastic. 393 foot tall tower. You're actually gonna drop from a height of 337 feet uh, and it'll reach speeds of 75 miles an hour. So it's got a good speed to it, this one. Like I say, I adore drop towers. Falcon's Fury is one of my favorites at Busch Gardens in Tampa. Uh, that was closed for a while, but that's now back open if you are planning a trip out there over the next few weeks uh, and beyond. And also another one of my favorites is a Keros over at Gronalund in uh, Sweden. That's a really nice one in Stockholm and the views are incredible. That's that's my favourite drop tower actually. But uh, yeah, really looking forward to this one. And uh, yeah, like I say, the seats are also going to tilt whilst you're on this, which is really going to add to the experience. It's going to be manufactured by Funtime and it's got a Scottish theme to the ride. You probably guessed that already from the name Highlander. It's going to form part of a brand new area called Beautiful Britain. So hopefully we're not just going to see the Scottish section. It'd be nice if they do maybe a Welsh theme ride, uh, an English theme ride. You know, it'd be good, wouldn't it? And maybe they could do something like that. I'd like to know your thoughts. Comment down below on this video. But uh, yeah, Highlander, that'll be one I'm going to next year. I can't believe that I've never been to Hansa Park. I really need to go, especially for Carnan. It looks like a great ride, as much as I'm not a big fan of Gerstlauer, and that's my main reason for not rushing out there, but I need to go and get on it and see it. It looks stunning, and I'd love to go on, on and the lift hill and all the drop. I won't spoil it if you don't know about that ride, but uh, yeah, Highlander, a brand new ride. Here's a little look at a video here released by the park with music from one of our favourites here at Theme Park Worldwide. I'm a score are doing the complete uh, theme music for this one. But uh, here's a look at a video from Highlander opening in 2019 at Hansa Park. I really like parks that do a unique theme, and I think this is something what's never been done before, so I'm looking forward to seeing that uh, next year. 100% I'll make my trip out to Anza Park for this one in 2019, and of course I'll film a vlog, and uh, loads of other bits at the park as well, so stay tuned for that one. Uh, on to our next bit of news then now, and that's from Six Flags America that are set to close its stand-up roller coaster Apocalypse on the 8th of September, so only a few weeks to go if you want to ride this one. Uh, now the ride only actually opened at the park in 2012, so it's not lasted very long there. However, it was previously relocated from another Six Flags park, uh, Six Flags Great America. Uh, this one looks great, it's got lots of thematic elements. I'll put an image on your screen just there so you can see it. It's got a plane crash there, you've got like huge fire effect, explosions, uh, zombies around the ride. It looks like a great themed coaster actually, in terms of what Six Flags do theming wise. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, uh, it is going to be closed on the 8th of September. But I think I know what's going to be happening with this one. I mean, I think a lot of you probably worked out already what I'm going to say. But the saying that, well, this is the quote from the website. It says, the end is near, but saying goodbye to Apocalypse will allow us to bring an all new, thrilling experience to our guests in 2019. First thing with this one, it's closing in September and opening 2019. I doubt they're going to completely remove a B&M and then rebuild something else there in that time. So I think they're going to do the whole what happened with Mantis at Cedar Point in Ohio. I know it's a different company. 
but they were both b and coasters and basically they turned them from a stand-up coaster into a flawless coaster and it's now called Rougarou. I think they're going to do the same with this one. Uh, it seems to be happening to a few of these stand-up coasters now. Um, so yeah, I genuinely think it's going to be a, a conversion into a flawless, which in a way is good because I'm sure it'll ride better. Uh, but in another way, it's quite sad because we're losing a lot of stand-up coasters now. I'm lucky to have one not too far away at a park called Drayton Manor uh, here in the UK. I'm only about 20 miles from it, about 40 minute drive. And uh, yeah, like, I feel like that ride's a bit underappreciated sometimes. So it's good to think that we've still got one here. Hopefully that's not going to get changed at any point. I think Drayton Manor won't do. I'm pretty sure they're going to keep it as it is. But that's also, well, technically it's an Intamin and B&M together. It was kind of being done during the transition period. I'd say it leans more towards an Intamin because uh, of some of the elements. But uh, yeah, comment down below. What do you think is going to be happening to Apocalypse at Six Flags America? Uh, personally, I think it's going to go flawless. Maybe you got some inside information. I know there's a lot of American viewers on the channel, uh, so let me know what you think is going to be happening uh, to this ride. Final bit of news then, the fourth bit of news to talk about this week. I told you it was a busy one. Uh, it's the opening of a completely transformed dark ride at Europa Park in Germany. Uh, now I'm going to try and pronounce this one. Uh, so basically it's located in the same structure as Eurosat Can Can Coaster, which is opening next month in September. I uh, look forward to seeing that one probably during winter season this year. Uh, and it's called Madame Friendrick Curiosities. Now you know what I'm like from pronunciation. You're probably all sat there laughing now, especially if you German, you're probably laughing at my accent doing that. Um, but that's soft open this week and it looks really nice. It's a complete transformation of the Universe of Energy attraction, uh, which is a dark ride using the Doom Buggy system, and it was loads of basically animatronic dinosaurs and it never really made sense in my opinion. I believe it did used to have a pre-show uh, but I never got to see that because it got stopped before I first went to the park. Uh, but yeah it looks interesting this one. Here's some images on your screen and this is one of those that you're either going to love it or hate this attraction. Me personally I love it because the ride before didn't really make much sense to the area, the French themed area uh, and this just looks crazy. Like uh, the, the backstory to this, let me tell you, you're probably looking at these images looking at dinosaurs here thinking what what the hell is going on? Uh, but yeah, basically the quote from the website is, head down to the former wine cellar, which now serves as a dinosaur breeding farm through the, to the lush garden where the dinosaurs are fed. There you go, it's a breeding farm basically for dinosaurs. You've got this mad lady with an animatronic uh, in the ride who's basically dressing all these dinosaurs up and feeding them things. It's a bit of a weird storyline, but it's Europa Park, isn't it? They've got a ride, you know, themed around, well, Christmas effectively. I know it's in the Russia area. It's all about Russia and all the snow and stuff, but you know what I mean? Like, it, it's one of them parts where they do these weird things. You either love them or hate them. Me personally, I love them because uh, it adds a bit of character to it. And basically, I just think it looks like an interesting development for the park. I can't wait to ride it and judge it for myself. But looking from the POVs, I think it's an improvement on what was there before. The queue line looks really nice. At least it's got a story now. It's got something relatable for the kids as well. They go on it and laugh at the dinosaurs, all these hats on and things. It's like a birthday party at the end. It looks really interesting and I can't wait to see that at some point and share my thoughts once I've ridden it here on the channel. But uh, there you go, that's now open at Europa Park, so go and check that out. And not long now until Eurosat Can Can Coaster and also the VR on there as well. With the VR on that, it's actually going to start uh, as soon as you enter like the pre-show area and you're actually going to board the coaster we're already wearing your VR, which will be interesting, making it a world first. Uh, from Mac Media, I look forward to uh, sharing a bit more about that one uh, when we know more and it opens as well. Uh, but there you go, that is all for your news this week. Lots going on. I love it when we have weeks like this where there's so much to talk about in the theme park industry. Uh, but it's now time for Guess the Ride. Here we are then, it's time for Guess the Ride. This one's a little bit more difficult. I think quite a lot of you struggled with this one, but there was a few people down in the comments uh, what did get this one right. And uh, that was a sound clip that I played to you last week uh, on the episode. And uh, yeah, it was actually a dark ride, this time over at Ferrari World in Abu Dhabi. And I filmed this video uh, back when I went earlier this year in January and took a sound clip from it. It's actually Speed of Magic, one of the dark rides there. Nothing spectacular in terms of a dark ride. 
ride. Um, but yeah, in terms of the sound effect, I thought it'd be a good one to use. But uh, there you go, there was a few bits in there. People thought it was Velocity, uh, Flamingo Land, you know, quite interesting with that sound effect that it had in it and stuff. But obviously it had some voices, some audio going on in there. But uh, there you go, well done to all of you uh, that got that one right. We're gonna have another sound clip then this week after a few weeks of zoomed in images, another sound clip. And I'll give you a little bit of a clue for this one because it's getting a little bit more difficult again. Uh, this ride is not here in the UK and it's not in America. <laughs> so there you go. And it is a roller coaster. So there you go. There are your tips for this one. And uh, here we go. Here's the sound clip for this week's Guess the Ride. Stop the sound clip just there. Quite a short one, it's not ridiculously long that one. But uh, there you go, remember this section is just for fun. If you think you know what it is, maybe you've got a bit of an idea, uh, comment down below on this video. I read all the comments every week here on the videos and I look forward to seeing uh, what you guys think it was. And I'll be back next week where we'll reveal that sound clip and I think we'll do another zoomed in image in next week's episode. So here we go then, it's time for Merch Paradise, the part of the show where I pick an item out here at the World of Theme Parks and share it with you guys here on the video. This one's from 2005 and it's actually a medal from the Alton Towers Splash Landings Hotel. You can see it's got the date down there, so what, it's 13 years old this, wow crazy. The hotel opened back in 2003 and uh, yeah, basically you could buy these for a number of years just to show that you'd stayed there. Even though it's local to us, my parents used to take me up there, we stayed over on the cheap deals that normally over winter, just just because it was it was cheap fun thing to do really and if I put it a bit closer it should uh, focus on that for you there to see it and obviously it's got the date down the bottom there just by my fingers and then I stayed at Alton Tower Splash Landings Hotel but uh, yeah nice little item that they used to sell them for the rides inside the park as well but uh, there you go it's one of my nice pieces that one I remember it from when I was a kid going there and uh, yeah there you go that's all for this week's Merch Paradise It really is a bumper episode this week. We had all that theme park news to talk about earlier on, and then now we've got our biggest interact ever with 36 photos sent in for this week's episode. That is crazy. Uh, thank you to each and every one of you for sending in your pictures. If you want them to be in next week's episode, all you need to do is message them to us via our official Instagram and Facebook pages. Just search Theme Park Worldwide. Here we go then, let's get started. 36 items, it's crazy. Uh, firstly here then, we've got Kevin with a Rita on ride photo from Alton Towers. Then got Trevor with an icon on ride photo there from Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Moving on, we've got Alan with a big one on ride photo from Blackpool Pleasure Beach. And then we've got Amy with a Wicker Man on ride photo just there as well. Following on for the theme there, we've got Chris also with Wicker Man on ride photo. And moving on, we've got Annie with an Icon on ride photo there. Good to see both Wicker Man and Icon proving to be very popular and you guys are getting out there to see them. Moving on, we've got Olivia uh, with me and Charlotte's Brick, which is on the plaza at Alton Towers. Uh, we've then got Lewis with a selection of photos from Alton Towers. Moving on, we've got uh, Sam just here outside Chiapas there at Fantasia Land. And then we've got Kay uh, just out oh, with the Nemesis on ride photo just there. There we go, so many photos, it's crazy. Uh, we've then got Adam also with the Nemesis on ride photo. Uh, so thank you very much for sending that one in there. And then we've got Jamie with a selection of photos and merchandise there. Uh, so there you go. Moving on, we've got Ruby who had a picture with me and Alex. So thanks for sharing that one. We've got Matthew with an Apocalypse on ride photo just there. So thanks for sending that one in too. Moving on, we've got Edward at Black Gang Chine with the donkey. If you've not seen the vlog, it's one of the most funny vlogs I've ever filmed in the history of me doing YouTube videos. Black Gang Chine, we went earlier this year, it's on the Isle of Wight, and check out the video. That donkey was making some questionable noises. <laughs> there we go. We next got Ola uh, with a speed on ride photo just there. So thank you very much for sending that one in. And of course, that is a water coaster at Energylandia that'll be going on next week. Can't wait for that one. Uh, moving on, we've got Jim outside Valhalla at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Uh, we've got Niels outside Phoenix just here at Toverland. That's coming up in a couple of weeks as well. Uh, next up then, we've got Glyn with me and Lee. Oh, there you go. I'm glad you got to meet both of us. And like I say, me, Lee and Alex went to Blackpool Pleasure Beach uh, like a couple of weeks back. That vlog is actually coming online in the next couple of days. So stay tuned for that one. Moving on, we've got Claire with an icon on ride photo there. Hey, you enjoyed the ride. And uh, thanks for sending that one in. 
Then got Lewis, uh, who had a photo there with me as well. So thanks for sharing that one. Next up, we've got Kyle uh, with a Wicker Man and Oblivion drawing. That's really good, that. Look at the details. So thank you very much uh, for sending that one in to me. Next up, then we got Kira just here who had a photo with me. Uh, it was good to meet you and thanks for sending it in. Then got Charlie with a big one on ride photo there as well. So thanks for sharing that one. Next up, Bo here with a photo at Chessington World of Adventures. And George here with a selection of different photos that he wanted to share. So thanks for sending those in. And then got Harry with a stealth on ride photo from Thorpe Park. Hope you enjoyed it. I had some great night rides on stealth the other week. Really enjoyed that one. Uh, next up then we've got Jack on Oblivion. So thank you for sending that one in to us. And then got Erin with a Manta on ride photo. So thank you very much for sending that to the show. And then got Kate and the rest of the family outside the Galactica port. Or loads of you there. What a great photo. Hi out there to all of you and thank you for watching Theme Park Worldwide. And then got William with a selection of theme park drawings. Again, really nice, those ones, very well detailed. So thanks for sending that one in to us and, of course, taking the time to draw them. We then got Samantha, who had a photo with me and Alex. If you see any of us from Theme Park Worldwide at the parks, stop us, come and have a chat. It's great to meet you guys. Uh, moving on then next, we've got Lewis and Evie on the roller coaster at Great Yarmouth. So thanks for sending that one to us. We then got Jenny at Fantasyland just there. Uh, Cal's up next with a merchandise selection there as well. And then the final photo is from Aaron with a selection there of American Adventure maps. I've got a couple of those as well somewhere here at the World of Theme Box. And uh, there you go, thanks for sending those in. The birthdays then this week, a big happy birthday from me and everyone at Theme Park Worldwide to Ian, Kate and also to George as well. And uh, there you go. I just want to say a big thank you to all of you for sending your items in. Get them sent in for next week. But most importantly, a big thank you to Charlotte, uh, of course the Theme Park Worldwide admin and of course my girlfriend as well. Without Charlotte, these videos wouldn't be possible because she replies to all the messages. When you message into us on Instagram or Facebook, she's the one that replies to you guys. I look after all the YouTube comments and the uploads, but she's the brains behind the operation. She puts all the photos together for the, each week's episodes. Uh, she really is fantastic. So a big thank you to Charlotte. Show your appreciation for Charlotte down in the comments below. Yes, I'm the one here, the face doing this video, uh, but without Charlotte, it really wouldn't be possible. She really, you know, dealing with all the messages all the time, replying to people, uh, and of course, putting all the photos together for the videos. It's a big job, so thanks to Charlotte uh, for that one. But of course, thank you to all of you guys for watching this week's episode. It's been a bumper episode, a long one, the longest one we've had in a while, actually. Uh, but it's great because it means a lot more theme park announcements, lots of items being sent in. And I'll be back next Wednesday, where I'm sure there's going to be quite a bit of theme park news to talk about. I'm Sean Sandbrook. Thanks for watching Theme Park Worldwide. Check out our brand new videos and vlogs to come online in the next seven days. And that means it's time to cue those credits. See you next week. Have a good one.